But there's been an outpouring of, of recognition, respect, and it's been a long journey. You've been along that journey. First of all, your reaction to the outpouring. It's warranted. Um, it's accepted. It's appreciated. People always have something to say about somebody. But it's been my experience that even though some of those experiences in the past may have been negative, when they speak about the man, not the union, it's not the trade union, it's not the politician. When they speak of the man that my father was, they speak very courteously, very pleasantly, very respectfully. I think that's the word I'm looking for because as a person, that's who he is in, in, intrinsically, you know? So as a politician, as a trade unionist, he had to be harsh. But as a man, he was a giant because he was gentle and he was loving and he was kind and he was my daddy. We saw that warrior side. We saw him uh, in the heat of battle. You've seen him outside of that, and now, obviously, we, we want to reflect on some of that. Yeah. So I was talking to my brother um, the other day, and I said, you know, you all had him from birth to 18. Mm -hmm. I had him after that. And I had him at that time when he was engrossed in trade unionism, engrossed in the political fabric of Bermuda. And... For me, there was that, a little bit of absenteeism, if you understand what I'm saying, but he was still there. We went fishing on weekends, we did other things. But as I became, as I, when I became a mother, is when our relationship started to develop because I was now a parent and I needed him more. And the love that he showed for his grandchildren far surpasses anything that a measure of a man, it just, it's just who he is. So our relationship began to develop even further once he retired. And then again, when you look now, so it's just me here because one of my brothers passed and my other brother has now um, transitioned over to Israel. Abir. Yes, Adi Jr. Yeah. And so now it's just me. And so I had him now and it was my duty to carry him through. It was my duty, and it was a pleasure. Yeah. It wouldn't be just me alone. There's, you know, there's the support of the community. There's the support of the doctors. Dr. Brent Williams was phenomenal in initially getting us to Lenox Hill Hospital back in 2018. And then we got there, Dr. Khalil Cato and Veranda Singh, they carried me through, but not without the assistance of Dr. Ewa Brown. Sure. You know, so, and then there's pastors that were praying for us constantly. Pastor Dijon Tall, Pastor Llewellyn Williams, and our great pastor, Genevieve Tweed. Yes. So I say this to say that I was not alone. I wasn't alone. I might have been there by myself, but I did have the support of people who were checking on me, people who could give me medical advice, people who could give me spiritual advice, and then my brother who could give me family advice. Did, did you did you feel the, the magnitude of what he was doing in community and what he was to community? Because, like I said, even from media point of view, this was Adi leading uh, in a radical way, uh, and it needed to be radical at some times. But it's only now or later in life, as, as I was speaking with him in making the documentary Victory, that I understand the nuances and and some of the many different moods and phases of Adi the man. But did you in, as a family feel that as you were coming along? For me, no. Only because I was not involved in that realm. My world was fishing, um, going to see Jesse Jackson, um, hearing Andrew Young, meeting various people like that. But I, I tell people all the time, like, I was at Arthur Hudson's house every weekend. Yes. Odinga and Jelani and myself. And then we'd be hanging off Cal Smith. And these were giants, but to me, it was just Uncle Arthur, Uncle Cal. So there was no real talk of work on the weekend. It was all about the family, the children, and if we were fishing or whatever we were doing. So no, it wasn't, I didn't feel it. Yeah. Much has been said 
about your dad, Adi. Victory has Adi in his own words. Why should this matter going forward? Well, if we forget our past and we lose who we are, and the very essence of what they fought for is for our benefits of today. And it wasn't just for the blue collar worker. Everyone reaps the benefits of the struggle of 1981 strike. So essentially, it's a big thank you. And if he can reflect on it, because I haven't seen it as yet, but if he reflects on it and says, well, we were doing this to achieve this, but we had to negotiate this way or that way, then that's just who he was. But for me, I saw it outside looking in, it was a time of coming together for people. Because I attended this school, work secondary at the time, and I lived in Tarn. And I could just walk down the road and someone say, you're going to work sack? I can take you as far as here. And then you get here in the afternoon and the parents would say, okay, I'm going to Devonshire. I ran track, so I was with Clive Long, track and field. And a parent would drop us to National Stadium. So it was a, definitely a time of unifying the country. Irrespective of all the other things that were going on outside, the teachers were at school, the parents were helpful, we all worked together. And if we can continue that on that trajectory, what a great world we would have, isn't it? Indeed. The legacy of Adi lingers on, but we will hear uh, in Adi's words why things were necessary. And as he says in one part of the documentary, 81, he says, something to this effect, is the difference between what Bermuda was and what Bermuda is. And I think he was then chronicling and weighing up the impact of even himself as to what we as a country went through at that time. Because without change, there's no growth in a man, is there? So that man that they saw, that you all saw in 1981, is not the man that they may have met in 2005, nor is the man that I know from 2020. So it's going to be an experience, and I think that it will be one that we should all treasure. The talks broke down. Everything shut down. Come on, we want to see you now. Government negotiating team was playing games with us. We did have some dissension in the ranks. I want you to learn to show solidarity. Well, fellas, the biggie is here. Because the thing gets somewhat complicated. It was moving. I think it's done a good service to the country. Um, it's one thing to hear about your history. Oh yeah. Very well done. A great historical documentation. It's going to go a long way to helping um, future students um, understand exactly what that whole boycott was about as well. Educational for me. Hopefully we can get in the school system and let everybody see it. I felt that it really raised emotions that I felt my parents and family had but couldn't speak. It was all real. It was a real story.